It helps if you take off the mute button. <laughs> this is why this is why I don't I don't do the techie stuff very often. Let me know if you guys can hear me now. Rather than me just talking to myself here randomly. Anybody? Hello? Okay, perfect. Awesome. I'm going to get underway. I know we have a few more people that are going to be joining us. Um, ah, and that's my first thing. So everybody who's on this call, or the last time that I did one of these webinars, I literally said um, 5,876 times. So I need somebody to be my um counter because for every um I say, I'm going to donate $10 to the Boys and Girls Club here in the Northland. So please keep track. I'm hoping it'll make me slow down too because I talk like an auctioneer half the time. So I am going to share my screen here really quick. Get this up and rolling. Oopsie. Okay. Can everybody see my my screen over here? You want to just drop a little little note in the chat box there too. Just let me know. So perfect. So my name is Darcy Novak, and I am here today uh, with all of my tech savviness here to help you guys build your careers. I've been in real estate for about 16 years and I absolutely positively love what I do. If I could wake up every single day and do something, I would do exactly what I do now. So that is really fun to be able to have a career that you're very passionate about. I feel really, really blessed to have that. However, one thing that I've learned in the last few years and really since, joy, since starting a team is that watching other people achieve their goals actually brings me even more joy than having myself achieve those goals. And that's one of the reasons why I'm reaching out today with this webinar and trying to share some of that information. So I've been in real estate about 16 years. I started a team um, about the same time, there was mine, about the same time that I joined Keller Williams, which is about four and a half years ago. Uh, since then, my world has really exploded and expanded. And I've really realized that part of it comes from making sure who we surround ourselves with, that we're gonna grow to the extent, our businesses are gonna grow to the extent of the people that we surround ourselves with, right? So if you want a better marriage, start hanging out with people that have solid marriages. If you want a better real estate career, start hanging out with people that have amazing careers. If you want to lose weight, start hanging out with people that take really good care of themselves, right? So that is kind of why I'm here today. I want to share with you in hopes that someday you're going to turn around and share with somebody else because quite frankly, somebody shared with me once and I feel that it's really important for all of us to give back. So Big Life Team this year, uh, 20, 20, we did just under 190 units, which is pretty exciting. I would love to take credit for that, but there are some really amazing and talented people who make up our team. And they truly are the bread and butter of what we have going on. So uh, I definitely have to have to give some give some of the credit, if not absolutely positively, every last bit of the credit to all of those amazing people. So let's get into it here. So I want you all to think for a second, because you guys are on this webinar because you really want to learn, you want to grow, you want to change your lives, right? This is, a lot of us got into real estate because we had either, we it was desperation if you were like me and just really needed a way to make ends meet and you felt like you could get further on your own in that entrepreneur type spirit than you could ever do working for somebody else, or you really just want to have a big life. So I want you guys to just imagine for just a little bit, what would you do if you were that six figure agent? And maybe throw it in the chat box, some of your ideas of what you would do. Would you pay down your debt? Would you buy a dream car? Would you fund your college education for your, for your kids? Would you plan those dream vacations that you've always wanted to take? 
Right. There's lots of things that we can do. But here's the thing about the crazy thing about life is every single thing that we do happens twice. So it happens first here before it can ever happen out there. So, you know, they did a study years ago uh, with with it was a, a famous college and they had actually like recorded uh, tracked these people throughout their career and they looked at people who actually had solid written down goals. They looked at people who had kind of idea goals and then they looked at the people who had no goals at all. And the results were astronomical as far as which ones were healthier, they achieved their goals. Many of them had retired early versus the ones, some of them had passed away, they had suffered many tragedies, some of them were bankrupt. So we really plan our destinies. It really starts here before it ever starts there. So I want you guys to really take some time and really think about that, like what would that do for your life? Think about the car, think about the college education, think about paying down that debt, getting a savings, maybe picking up some rehab properties and, and building investment income for yourself and your family, if leaving that legacy for people that you care about. Really get that emotion involved. So one of the best books right here, I have a stack of them in my office, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, and I am with Keller Williams. I'm definitely not here to plug Keller Williams. However, I, I will admit my life would not be where it is today without the company and the training and being able to surround myself with people who are just on such a higher level emotionally, financially, spiritually, uh, business-wise. I wanted to get into that group and I knew it really just didn't exist around where, like, where I was at that time. And so I wanted to be with like-minded thinkers. And this book, The Millionaire Real Estate, was probably my first step into making that life change for myself. I've read this book probably, I think, about eight times. I actually have, have it written in one of my books. I, I made myself write every time that I read it. This is a different one. It's one was for somebody else. But I basically like wrote on there where I was at, how I read it. Even though I've read this many times, I've probably only absorbed about 8% of this book into my business on a high functioning level. Gary Keller does tell us that if we haven't taken a class or a training at least a dozen times, we're still in kindergarten. And I know a lot of us will sometimes take these trainings, maybe even this one today, and you kind of get this idea that that you've taken it, you know it, now you're gonna go out there and implement it. And what happens is if you're like me, you only take that small percentage of the information that actually gets played out in your real life. So it's really important that you continue that repetition because it really needs to become a habit. You gotta ingrain that in part of your personality. So when we're looking at the model of the millionaire real estate agent, and you, by the way, notice on here, it says it's not about the money. Quite frankly, if you get into this because solely of the money, you're probably not going to have that career that you really want because people pick up on that. They know if you care about them and their needs and their home, or if you're in it for what it's going to do for you. So, you know, making sure that your values are aligned, I think is really important when you go about wanting a really big career in real estate. So if we look at this triangle, we have leads at the bottom and then listings and leverage. So we talk a lot about systems and processes and models in our business. Uh, John Maxwell is the one that said, systems make the ordinary extraordinary. And that is one thing that I have really tried to get better and better at every year in, in our business is really tweaking those systems and models and processes. Our admin, when we, when we hire our admin, we, we always tell them, you know, your job every day is you have one job and that's to make the systems and processes better than what they are. So, if you kind of go about that, I always think about that, like what would what would happen to my life if I was able to take that mindset and apply it to everything I do, right? Like what if my morning workouts, I was like, I need to make this just 1% better today or my conversations with people, 1% better today. Like what would that, what would that 
look like at the end of the year, right? We have, we've all heard of, of, of that, you know, that accumulation that happens when we focus on an activity or, and the results of that activity and how they show up over time. So it's that compound interest effect, right? We know about that from banking and finance, that kind of thing. So there's a reason why leads are at the bottom here, you guys. If, if we don't have leads, we don't have a business. I don't care if you're grooming dogs, if you're selling groceries, if you're selling flowers, you're selling real estate, I don't care what you're selling. If you don't have leads, you do not have a business. So how are we going about getting these leads, right? We definitely want to have a large variety of resources on where these come from. We work, we work hard to have multiple streams of this in our business. So we do Facebook, we do Sphere, we do open houses, we do for sale by owners, we do expireds. We have this pretty large list. In fact, right now in one of our databases, we have about 13,000 leads and potential people in there. And so what we really have a problem with sometimes, remember with those systems and processes, are, are really the key to having a really big career in this business. So, so that's one of the things we're working on right now. How do we, how do we make sure that we're taking those 13,000 leads and we're building relationships from them and building their trust, right? Because if people like you and trust you, they will do business with you. So taking those leads and really making, having purposeful activities around them and really focusing, you know, all of you that are on here, you're all going to have different things that you want to do for your lead gen. Some people love door knocking. I know one agent that literally built an amazing career by door knocking a hundred doors a day, every week. Didn't matter how cold it was. Didn't matter how snowy, how rainy, how slushy. He was out there knocking on doors. And you know what happens is we're either going to have excuses in this business why we're going to do something, or we're going to have excuses in our head on why we can't do something. So when you hear about somebody who's out there knocking 100 doors a day when it's cold and rainy and slushy and cruddy, you know, that's somebody who's letting those voices in their head are, are, are letting them they're overcoming them. They're taking that, what we call that drunk monkey on their back, that thing that kind of holds you back from your potential. They're taking that guy off there and just throwing him off into the wind, right? So let's say we have all these leads, right? We got leads. I just told you, we got a lot of leads. So now we need to figure out these other two aspects of the, of the triangle. So now how do we take all those leads and we turn them into listings, right? What are those conversations? What kind of tools are we offering? What kind of services are we providing them with our value proposition to letting them know that we are the right people for them to trust with their largest asset? So I don't care if you are brand new in the business, you have, you have value proposition. Maybe it's your brokerage, maybe it's the people you get to learn from, maybe it's a track record of a team you're on, uh, perhaps it's, uh, it's your listing presentation. Maybe it's the fact that you use, uh, you do significant amount of open houses. Maybe it's the processes around those open houses. I could go on and on and on about all the different things that you can do for your value proposition to be able to get listings. But here's the thing you can have, like I do all those leads in that database. But if you are not picking up the phone and calling them, you're not going to get that angle of the triangle, right? It all comes down. Real estate is a contact sport. The more people that we can contact in a day, the more leads we're going to have that is going to lead to listings, that's going to lead to pendings, that's going to lead to contracts, that's going to lead to paychecks. So then we talk about leverage. So leverage is, that was a really hard concept for me to grasp when I first came into the business. First of all, as an independent agent, and I, I was doing right around 70 deals a year fairly consistently. And quite frankly, I had a little bit of ego disease that like if somebody else was doing whatever that job was, they just couldn't possibly be doing it as well as me. They couldn't possibly care about those clients as much as I did. 
And so that was a really hard piece for me to let go. And the people on my team will probably tell you it's still a little bit hard for me. Um, so here's another one. I hope somebody's keeping track because I'll be writing a check for sure. So that leverage piece, what, what, I, what I learned though, is that when you get the right people in the right seat on the bus, sometimes you got the right people, but they're just not in the right position. But when you get them into the right position on the right seat on the right bus, literally magic happens, magic. So I was on a webinar last week with my, with my dear friend, Ryan Hansen over on the other side of the state. And his, his, his team cracked out about 360 deals this last year. Just absolutely like, what? How's that even possible? Do you think that guy knows a little, little bit about leverage? Right? So remember back when we, when we started this and I said it's about who you're going to put in your bubble, right? Ryan's definitely somebody I want to be in his bubble. Like he, is, he is pushing the envelope. He's always learning, always growing, always driving. He's a doer. Doers have big businesses. Planners have great plans. So you've got to make sure that you're a doer in this business. Don't let it be about the money. Let it be about for what good money can do. Remember when we talked about earlier about like imagining what you're gonna do with that six figure income? That's the good money can do. Money isn't good for the money. It's good for what, what it can give you. All right, so you're on your way to becoming a six figure agent. What does your day look like, right? So I actually pulled this exact calendar from one of our agents who is a six figure agent to see like, okay, what was she doing that made her crack it out of the, knock it out of the park this year? And how can we get you to get to that mindset and that level? So this young woman is really great at systems and processes. She is better than I will ever be. And so she has taken her, her you can see here on the screen, she's got her A buyers, She's got her, um, she's got, well, not this week, but she's also got B buyers. She's got C buyers. So what that means is basically when she has those conversations with people, she's kind of labeling them. So A buyers are like, they're ready to pull the trigger right now. They got to find something, their house sold, they're got to start a job, they're on a deadline. Those are going to be her top priority. She's going to, she's going to reach out to them all the time because those buyers are thinking about buying when they get up in the morning, in the shower, at night, when they go to bed, they don't stop thinking. You cannot over communicate with an A, especially with an A buyer, even a B. So her B buyer, she's going to contact probably every other week and she's going to keep them on her reverse searches and make sure she's sending them texts. And what she does is she, she will text them actually Mondays and Thursdays because quite frankly, she probably worked maybe five weekends this last year, give or take. And so she's going to message them on Thursday. So hopefully she can get them into something on Friday so that it doesn't mess up her whole weekend. So you can have a really big career and not have to work 70 to 90 hours a week if you're really strategic and purposeful with your time. So you can see she's got everything outlined here as far as her appointments and you know what she's doing. Now, when she has gaps in her calendar here. What do you think that agent's doing? You think she's going home for the day? It's definitely not. If, if I would be willing to bet, I probably left my one office and went to the other office and probably forced her to go home about 7 or 7.30 because she was still working on her base of the triangle, still reaching out to people. I always say nobody is the, the successful secret agent. You guys got to get in front of people. They got to know your friends on Facebook, your, your, your sphere, businesses that you do business and associate with. They need to know that you're a real estate agent. It's really difficult to have a successful career as a secret agent. So um, quite frankly, uh, you will see her Sundays are blank. Uh, that is a team choice that we make. We actually, we choose to not work Sundays. Everybody can have their own business model and what works for them. Once in a great while, if somebody needs to, 
absolutely positively see something, we will make an exception on a Sunday if they're flying in, they're only there that day or whatever. But quite frankly, for the most part, we, we choose as our team to take that time for God and family. And we feel that that is really important to us. And quite frankly, you know, some of those people who don't understand that might not be people that we really want to do business with anyways. So making sure that you take, keep, keep your calendar productive. There's not a lot of time for squirrel disease in here. And that's, I have massive skilled squirrel disorder to the nth degree. I have to really make an effort to keep myself concentrated on things. So you got to make sure that you're not having, you know, that Facebook isn't calling your name and you're not sitting there on scroll for 20 minutes. You got to make sure that you're not, you know, searching the internet or following up with your emails. And sometimes that can be a real problem because in the summer we get so busy in June and July come and we believe we're rock stars and we are just pumping out the deals and we take our foot off that lead gen. Well, every single thing we do today is going to affect us 90 days from now, 60 to 90 days. So, <coughs> excuse me, no matter how busy you are, you got to still make sure that you are keeping the foot on that lead gen pedal. Because if you're not, chances are you're going to have a rude awakening in September, October, November, December, right? So let's see here. So what should a successful real estate agent be doing? Well, according to this, and this has turned out thousands and thousands of successful real estate agents, they should be doing five things. They should, number one, be looking for those brand new leads. Those are the for sale by owners, the expired, maybe friends and family that didn't even know that they were going to maybe be buying and selling, but we're top of mind, so they call us. Uh, those new leads, remember everything we do today is gonna affect us 60 to 90 days from now. The second thing we need to be doing is following up on existing leads. So I see this all the time in the office. Is it more fun to call somebody you don't know or is it more fun to call somebody you've already built a relationship with that they're already in the works of buying and selling and you're just kind of touching base, right? Well, obviously, it's a lot more fun to call people who are already, you know, you have that relationship built with a little bit. They already like you. They trust you. They want to do business with you. So sometimes it can be a little bit of a bad habit for high producing agents to want to lean a little bit too much on the follow up and less on the new lead, the new lead construction. The great thing nowadays is that, in, and I'll be honest, I haven't dealt a lot with CRMs. We're just really diving into it now. We've been dealing off these painstaking spreadsheets for many years. So, so much of this, if you get a really good CRM, can be automated. We have a, a new platform that we're dealing with right now that is really going to just take so much of that work off, where we can we can get them on those, those touches, the emails and the and that setting them up on their uh, marketing reports and so on and so forth so that we can stay more focused in that new lead because our systems will automatically be doing that. A lot of the follow-up we will just need to be making sure that we're picking up the phone once in a while. Third thing you need to do as a highly successful agent is you've got to be writing contracts. If you're not writing contracts, you're not going to have closing dates. You are not going to have a payday. So, and the fourth thing is negotiating contracts. We have nothing but problems all day, every day in real estate. You have to be a really good problem solver. You gotta be an outside of the box thinker. The sky cannot always be falling because you are that person who needs to be that rock, that pillar of strength for your clients. And you have to make sure that you're kind of are really taking that, that calm in the storm type attitude with them. So, and then the fifth thing that we're doing is we're working on our skills to do those other four things better and better and better all the time. So what does that, what does that exactly mean, right? What does it mean to get better at looking for new leads? Well, maybe we're trying out some new lead platforms or maybe we're knocking on doors or maybe we're coming up with some systems and processes around our sphere. We have on our team, uh, a, a multifaceted touch campaign that we are doing around our sphere. We know that the average real estate business is going to come about 70% from the, your sphere. 
because they already like you, they already trust you. But what happens is some of them forget you do real estate because you aren't reminding them. You're not staying top of mind. So we try to make sure that we're doing like a, a constant drip campaign with those people and making sure that we are coming top of mind. Um, so what does it look like to get better and better at following up with existing leads? Well, it probably means that we are uh, developing some systems and processes around that, like, like the agent that had the A, B, and C touches, right? She's making sure that she's getting that dialed out so people aren't forgetting about her. It happened to me today. I was doing my lead gen, and I called people that called us to buy and sell. Uh, it was it last summer? And guess what? They're pending with another agent closing February 5th, I think he said. So yeah, that's that's a frustrating call. It's a really frustrating call. And you know, and it happens, I don't care how good you get at these things, it's gonna happen. I always say we get every closing that God wants us to have. So however, it's a good wake up call to make sure that we're getting better and better and better at those things all the time. So how do we get better at writing contracts? Well, we practice. We don't practice on our paychecks, right? When they have those those uh, um, changes that happen, there was another one. Those changes that happen every August, we're making sure we pay attention, reading through those, understanding, internalizing them. We are blessed uh, here at our organization to be able to learn from one of the top brokers in the states. So our new agents are all required to attend those three those Thursday classes on forms to get better and better at understanding those forms. So that's what it means, working continuously to work, work on those skills better and better all the time. And guys, we don't graduate. If you want a big career, don't graduate. Be learning, be growing. But here's the other thing. Don't be learning and growing in the middle of your lead gen time. Save that for lead gen time. And if you erase, replace. Try to make sure that you have it there. So another way that we get better and better at doing things is really learning our scripts. We learn to have purposeful conversations, right? We want to make sure they're professional. We want to make sure that we're, we know what our clients needs are. We want to find out their timelines. We want to find out their motivations. So, you, you know, your goal is really to, to be able to, you know, understand their needs, their timelines through asking questions. Sometimes we get busy talking that we're not listening enough to what they really need. So help them help build the relationship. This is how we help them. I'm going to pull up a little script here. Oh, you know what? Never mind. I'm just I got it right here on the screen. I forgot I, I it was part of the thing. So <clears throat> sometimes people are like, I don't want a script. It sounds so it sounds so practiced. It sounds so fake, so on and so forth. Well, guess what? We all have scripts. It's just either your words or somebody else's. And I don't know about you, but I would rather use conversations of people that have been doing this at a crazy high level than to use my off the cuff conversations where I'm going to end up working with people that are either unmotivated or unqualified. Because if I'm getting up on Saturday morning and I'm leaving my family to go show a home, I would really like that person to be motivated and qualified. So it's really important to practice those scripts and those conversations, making sure that those people are motivated and qualified. All right, so we'll just do a fake, fake, ring, ring. Uh, thank you for calling today. This is Darcy with Keller Williams. How can I help you? Uh, hi, Darcy, I'm looking at a property at 123 Main Street. And um, I was just kind of looking for a price on that. Oh, awesome. I can help you with that. Uh, everything they say is always awesome, great, affirm it, repeat what they say, so on and so forth. So you're looking at this house at 123 Main Street. Are you new to the area? Uh, no, I'm uh, actually moving here from, um, uh, well, I used to be from here and now I'm, I'm moving back again from down in the metro area. It's just getting too crazy and I, I want to get back in, in the country, have some land, have some space, that kind of thing. Oh, good for you. I really get that. I, I, I love I love my weekends at the, at the cabin so I can totally relate to that. So, uh, so will this be cash or will you be using financing for this purchase? 
So when you ask a question like that, sometimes if you say, are you qualified? People automatically get irritated and their panties in a bunch and they don't wanna, they feel like offended kind of thing. If you ask them if they're cash, they want, oh yeah, she thinks, you know, I got cash, you know, kind of thing. So this is again, where scripts, the way we word things, the tonality around it, that really changes some of the conversations and dialect and our ability to connect with people on a deeper level. So, so how soon would you like to be in their new home? Well, my son starts hockey in the fall, so for sure we would like to be moved in, you know, two months before because there's a summer camp starting up in Hermantown I'd really like him to get to, right? So now we're, we've, we're learning about their needs, right? We're learning timeline, motivation. We just learned hockey is important to them and their family. They learn, we learn their son's school and his activities are really important for them. Um, and then we get into, so do you have any, any must-haves for your, for your home, like a home office, maybe some pet space? Uh, how about garage? Does your husband like to tinker in the garage a little bit? Or maybe you like to do projects out there where you need a little bit of a workspace? You know, really diving in and getting to know them on a deeper level. So often we get on the phone and we're just finding out how many bedrooms, how big of a lot, how big of a garage, and we're forgetting to build the relationship we're forgetting to find out what they really need. So I was on another webinar last week, um, a guy by the name of Joel Rico, by the way, if you ever have an opportunity to take a class with Joel Rico, jump on it, because he's amazing. So and he, he said, would you rather be the agent that uh, handled their transition move or their, their uh, uh, the, the step down buyer, would you rather, would you like to be the ad agent? Or would you like to be the agent that gets those clients closer to their grandchildren? And it really makes a huge difference, doesn't it? The same task is getting accomplished. However, one of those situations, we're really building the relationship. We're really caring about that person. We're making sure it's not about the money. We're going deeper and and that's going to have a reciprocal effect. Those are the kinds of situations in real estate where you grow that bigger business because you care. And those people are going to go tell their friends, she cares, call her, right? So let's see here where we're at for time. I'm probably having way too much. So I love statistics around real estate. This is my happy spot. Um, because there's another one, I hope somebody's counting. So, you know, knowledge is really power. I, I love understanding our market. I love knowing why this, this area sells faster than this one. And, you know, why, why this area, some people uh, have more of a difficult time with and the price points and what you get for your house or your money. It's just, I find it fascinating. I think it talks just a lot about, about human nature. And I think, you know, when we kind of understand some of those statistics, we, we and, and even about our industry too, which is what we're getting into here, you really start to see the bigger picture of things, right? So knowledge is power. 20% of agents um, are licensed of agents doing real estate today are licensed less than one year. 20%. That's huge. So when you're calling your friends and family and you feel like you're bugging them, would you rather they get into business with you or would you rather they get into business with one of those 20% of the agents that's brand new to the business, right? And maybe you are one of those 20%. Well, hang out with people that are outside of that 20%. Start learning the conversations, learning the scripts, learning the processes, the systems, and you know, don't go, don't just go out there and wing it. These are this is people's biggest assets come from contribution. So 20% of agents make over a hundred thousand dollars. One out of five. So now keep in mind, I have a lot of friends who sell in Boston and Seattle and California and Florida. And these markets, like, what is that? Like three houses for them to sell? Seriously, these commissions are just ludicrous. 
we have to work a little harder in northern Minnesota, quite frankly, even than our friends down in the metro area. So only 2% of agents make over $250,000 a year. Only 2%. Do you think there's a difference in the daily calendar schedules of those agents making over 250 a year versus those agents that are in that 20% of those that are that 80% of those that are, are under 100,000, I'm guessing their calendars look pretty different. I'm guessing their systems and processes look a little bit different. I'm guessing their, their leverage systems look a little bit different, right? Uh, the average real estate in the United States does 12 deals a year. If you actually do the math, and figure out like, uh, I think it's uh, between, if you're calling between two and five people a day and you were religious about it five days a week, you would do about 12 deals a year. Which if you think about it, most people that are out at the gas station or uh, you know out for dinner or whatever, we're having you know roughly, I would say those kind of conversations about two to five, even on accident, that's without putting a lot of purpose and intention on it. So that's when it, that's when your career will switch, when you get purposeful with your activities, purposeful with your conversations. Minnesota has over 20,000 agents of January 2020. Is that not nuts? Talk about competition, you guys. If you want to stand out with those 20,000 agents, you got to get on your game face, right? You got to you got to start paying attention to some of the stuff that we just went over. Start treating your business like a career and not like a part-time job that's just fun and flexible. Start treating it like, like it's a nine to five job. Be really purposeful with those hours from nine to five. If you're coming in at 10 and you're leaving at four and you know, you're taking an hour for lunch and it takes you a while to get into the routine of your day because when we're un uninterrupt, when we are interrupted, it takes an average of 20 minutes before we get back on task again. So it's really important to make sure that we are staying focused with our activities and really, and really we have to be, if you wanna have a big career, you have to be intentional. Realtors earning $100,000 or more are, are more than twice as likely to use advanced tech like a CRM. 45% of the brokers report that keeping up with tech is the biggest challenge. This is one thing that they're actually um, predicting across the board in the United States is that we are going to see individual agents going away. We're going to see people joining a lot more teams and we're going to see those mom and pop brokerages really going away because tech is it's not going away. It is massively changing all the time. I can guarantee you what we know as tech today is going to be different six months from now, a year from now, two years from now. Um, there's another one. It, we're, it's going to be driving a lot of people out of the business, unfortunately. And it's going to, it's going to really affect the people that are actually here and left. So the percentage of agents that fail in their first five years is between 85 and 90 percent. That's nine out of 10 agents, guys. Nine out of 10 agents fail in real estate. Is that insane? That's a lot. So what are you doing to make sure you're not one of those nine out of 10 agents that fails in your first five years? You got to be disciplined. You got to make sure you're focusing on those five things, looking for new leads, following up with existing leads, negotiate writing contracts, negotiating contracts, and do not ever forget to work on your skills to do these other four things better and better and better all the time. If you can keep your focus there, you will have a big life and a big career. So, so how do you set yourself up for success, right? Let's say you're a brand new agent and you are like super overwhelmed with everything, or maybe you've even been in it for a year or two years and you want to do more. Maybe you want to, maybe you want to go from five deals to 15 deals this year. Um, how do you, what are you doing to set yourself up for success? So your database will effectively, and it's not just the size of your database, it's how effectively you communicate with it. 
those 13,000 leads we have in a database don't do us any good at all if we are not effectively communicating with it. And believe you me, it's not easy to go through that many leads. So that's going to really determine the, the, the trajectory of your success level. You know, what are your systems and processes around making sure that you're staying connected with those people? So real estate is a numbers game all day, every day. It is a contact sport. For every 100 contacts that you have, you can expect about three, year, three leads a year if you're working your database. So are you reaching out to five people a day or 100 people a day? It's going to make a huge difference, huge difference. So you keep in mind that that person that's calling five people a day, it's going to take them 20 days. Pretty much all of the work days in a month almost are going to be spent to the other agent who's working on 100 people in that one day. They're going to be they're going to be miles ahead, right? So educate yourself. Um, be a learner, be a grower, but mostly be a doer. So you have to take the actions. You've got to get the drunk monkey off your back to actually reach out. You are not bugging people. You are caring about them. And you're helping them make educated decisions. That is the most wonderful thing you can do in your day. Um, practice, know the market, know the forms, know your scripts so you can have effective conversations with motivated and qualified people, right? So if you're not licensed, get your license. That's step one. Um, grow your database. That's step two. And really think, you know, where can you pull your database? Your, your phone, your email, uh, who are you doing business with? Um, Facebook, we can pull them off there. LinkedIn, really think outside of the box. You know, family, friends, relatives, so on and so forth. Um, and then start, you know, you, this is the most powerful thing that you can do to grow your business is really control your mind. You know, get that drunk monkey off your back. Those voices in your head will be right every single day of the week. If, if you listen to them telling you you can't do something, they will be right. If you, if you listen to them and they are telling you that you can do something, they will also be right. <laughs> So really making sure that you have control of your mindset is so huge. And don't forget, everything happens twice. You want to achieve big, big goals, you got to figure out what they are first, right? So you can't, you can't go to the gas station and say you're lost. And when they say, well, where are you going? Be like, well, I'm not really sure, but you know, I just want to keep going forward. Same thing with your goals. They have to be specific if you want to achieve them. You gotta, we call it smarting them out. You gotta make sure they're specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So interview brokerages, um, you know, if you're licensed and not growing, is it because of your lack of actions or is it because of your lack of leadership and training in your organization? Um, and by all means, call with questions. I can, I can honestly, say anybody on our team just loves pouring into people. We really love uh, sharing and caring and helping other people. Um, so we definitely, definitely want to be that resource for people for sure. So I have a few, a few minutes I have, uh, I'm actually wrapping up early, probably because I, I didn't, I said about 6,000 fewer ums today. So <laughs> that made a big difference. Uh, I want to know what questions people have. What questions can I help you with with real estate? I see Steve's on here. Dawn, cutest little girl in real estate's on here. Travel, travel's awesome. Does anybody have any questions? Not all at once. Don't fight over me. So, oh, that's a good question. How do you track your goals? So that is a really great question. So we on our team, and you can do this all kinds of different ways, we have what's called a 135. So we have one goal, and then we come up with three strategies that will achieve that goal. And then we come up with five priorities to achieve those strategies. So for instance, this year on our team, uh, we are hoping to do about 250 transactions. 
So there's three ways we're going to get there. We're going to get there with leads, we're going to get there with talent, and we're going to get there with our customer service and our hub, uh, with our, with our uh, admin staff and um, kind of the behind the scenes people that actually are, are the ones that make the, the world go round for us. So we track out like what are the five things, for instance, that we're going to do for leads. I'm looking at it because it sits right in front of me on the wall where I can see it every day. Um, we're going to do, there's another one, expired FISBOs, event parties. Thank you, COVID. That was super helpful this year. This year we had to do drive-by for pie. Uh, social media and lead follow-up. How are we finding talent, jo job fairs, ads? Um, by the way, once you have talent, you got to keep pouring into them. So weekly coaching, uh, weekly 411s, monthly and quarterly reviews, that's just an example. So then we take that 135 and we put it into what's called a 411. So we all have different goals on our team that we want to achieve, uh, personal, financial, spiritual, business, so on and so forth. And so we break it down, okay, here's my goal for the year. And this stems from our 135. So now what am I going to do in the month of January to achieve this goal, this goal, this goal, this goal? Okay, great. Now what am I going to do this week? What are the activities? And remember, smart amount, specific, uh, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. What am I going to do to accomplish them this week? So, and then we, we actually share those with the whole team so that we can hold each other accountable for being basically aware. It's, you know, when, we, when I told you what to envision what you would do with that six figure income, we're doing that same thing with each other on the team every week by sharing our phone one ones. And then on Fridays, we also do a, a kind of an accountability sheet. How many people are you talking to? Did you, did you meet your goal of 20 people today? Uh, are you, Brian's on the job in here, or on the call in here, I'm breaking him up. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, like thanks. Anything you can learn from me for crying out loud, Ryan. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm not worthy. It comes to Ryan. So, uh, so on Fridays, we basically track like, okay, what were the activities that we did this week? What can we put on our agenda for next week? That's going to propel, move, move us forward just a little bit further to, to achieving our, our goals. So any other questions? <laughs> Steve says no. Well, by all means, you are more than welcome to reach out to me at any point in time. Um, my cell phone is 218-780-7036. My email is darcy at biglifeteam.com. And I uh, hope to be doing some webinars, possibly with Ryan up here. We were thinking about doing one called, uh, um, so you so you, uh, so you want to want to start a team. So we might be looking more a little bit more on that down the future. So uh, what city is our office in? We have two offices. We have one on the range and one in Duluth as well, Steve. So feel free to reach out with if with any questions. Um, happy to, to discuss with you and, and help you with your own goals. If you need help with your 135 or your 411 or uh, organize your new database, feel free to reach out anytime. Take care. God bless. And I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.